welcome to Photography TV. We're going to educate, entertain, and inspire you around photography. I apologize for my terrible video. I am in a hotel in Boston, <laughs> but I am excited to have a big friend of the show, uh, Nick Page, on with us. Nick's work is incredible. He's been on a number of times, very well received, and I can't think of anyone better to talk about the solar eclipse. Nick, oh. welcome back. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me on. Um, solar Eclipse is coming up, and I live pretty close to the path that it's going through, so it's very okay. much on my radar. So thanks for having me on. I'm excited to talk about it. All right. So I know a lot of people are interested in it, and it's something that a lot of people want to photograph, but I know it's not going to be easy to photograph. Right. In some cases, we might have 90 seconds to make it happen. So the point of having you on today is help us prepare. Well, step one is prepare for just so many people. It's going to be a mass of humanity anywhere close to the path of totality, as they call it. Yeah. So, there, so when people say totality, that means that's where you're going to get that perfect circular you know, disc where the moon is completely blocking the sun. That's called totality. Yeah. And there's a, a path that you have to be in in order to see that. And then once you get outside of the path, either north or, north or south of it, then you start getting that partial eclipse where, you know, it's, you're talking like 95% and 94%. Yep. So anywhere close to that totality, you know, there's just going to be more humanity than you've ever seen in that area. It's going to, those places are going to be completely inundated. So step one is that you're going to have to figure out where you're going to go and you need to plan accordingly and plan on those traffic jams that are likely to happen. Okay. Now question on that. Does our approach to photographing it change if we're shooting totality or if like me, I'm going to be in Texas, I'm not getting totality. Should our approach change or we're we just not going to get... <clears throat> the perfect coverage. Uh, your, your plan changes for one, okay. because you're, you're not, uh, if you're not going to be shooting totality, you're definitely going to need some form of solar filter. So okay. now we're getting into gear talk, uh, yeah. gear that is needed in order to just look at the sun and photograph the sun changes depending on a couple things. For one thing, focal length really matters. So you know, when I'm photographing a sunset with a wide angle lens, I don't think twice about shooting the sun because it's, you know, a tiny little dot in my frame. But the one thing that I never do is take my 600 millimeter lens and just <laughs> fill the frame with the sun because that's a whole, by doing that, you're magnifying the, the power wow. that's going into your sensor and you're magnifying all of, you know, that, that sun. And by doing that, you are going to damage your sensor for if you do it for any length of time at all. So uh, okay. you're going to need a filter. And the typical ND filter, like a 10 stop or even a 15 stop ND filter, you would think that that would work. But the problem is that's only cutting out the visible spectrum of what we see with our eyes, but it's not cutting out the infrared and the UV rays, which are also coming from the sun and will also damage our sensor. So if you're going to be shooting before and after totality, you're going to need a solar filter of some kind. And the bad news is it's everywhere is probably sold out. So if you don't have one yet, guess what? You're not going to get one because they're all sold out. It's a very popular time to buy one. Yeah. So if I if I have one, awesome. If I don't, should I try a wider angle? Is that the is that the best way to do it to make sure I don't damage my camera? Yeah, I would say a slightly wider focal length. You you're not going to have to worry so much. And when you get really close to totality, the uh, the amount of energy that's going to be hitting your sensor is not going to be as powerful and as damaging. So as you get close to that totality, a lot, a lot of people are going to be taking their filters off. And during totality, you shouldn't be shooting with a filter at all. So if you're shooting without a filter, wait for that closest moment to totality and okay. probably don't fill the frame. Don't use your 600 okay. millimeter. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so you talked about gear, huge tip, because the last thing I want to do is burn up our sensors. Yep. Um, talk about just composition. So you talked about maybe using a longer focal length, but how should we be thinking about composing the shot? 
I think because this doesn't happen all the time, you should cover your bases. So I'm going to be shooting with at least two cameras, hopefully assuming that the, my camera I just destroyed gets back in time. <laughs> but but uh, assuming I have both my cameras, I'm going to be shooting both fairly wide angle with some kind of interesting foreground. And then I'm going to be shooting the, you know, the typical telephoto, trying to fill the frame with the sun and, and all of the coronal mass and coronal gas that's coming out around that disc. That's one of the coolest things about photographing an eclipse is that you get to see the stuff that you don't, don't normally get to see from the sun. You get to see all of the gases that are emitting from the sun because wow. the brightest part of that disc is being blocked out. So you can see stuff that you can't normally see. So in order to do that, you need a telephoto lens. And so typically somewhere between 400 and 600 millimeters is going to be kind of a sweet spot for that. Uh, yeah. But it's a once in a lifetime thing. So I also want to shoot kind of a landscape and get some kind of cool, you know, yeah. you know, cool dead tree under an eclipse or something. That'd be so cool. The hard part of that and here's the catch 22 is that it's happening so late in the afternoon, 11 o'clock in my area, that it's going to be straight up. So you're going to yeah. have to plan ahead and try to get, you know, some interesting, very tall structure in front of you to put that sun, the sun next to. So that that's something else that people are going to have to plan around. I'm going to try to find some cool old, like abandoned building or something where I can get something up in that part of the sky to put next to the sun. That's awesome. I can already, I, I, number one, I know the importance of planning ahead, but I can already envision that 90 seconds just being all focused, get it done, yep. and just not, not chaos, but you know, high energy for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you that are lucky enough to be able to travel into the path of totality, that's a, yep. that's such a fancy term. I love saying that. <laughs> uh, you're going to have anywhere from like two and a half minutes to two minutes in that path okay. of totality. And then as you get away from that center path, the time gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And then eventually you're not getting totality at all. Um, yeah. There's some websites out there and I think it's called like time and date. Or if you just do a search, a Google search, like solar eclipse time and date, it'll show you the amount of totality that you're going to get or the amount of uh, eclipse that you're going to get. Any other thoughts we should be thinking about heading into this? Uh going to be a huge, huge dynamic range scene. Even if you're okay. shooting just, you know, telephoto, it's a huge dynamic range that you're dealing with. So bracket the crap out of this thing. Like just do a <laughs> huge bracket. This is going to be the only time that Nick is ever going to do like a five to seven shot bracket, just because yep. I want to cover my bases. I want to get as many shots as I can. Also, when you're shooting into the sun like this and using filters, it is a recipe for lens flare. So to make sure that you're not getting any more lens flare than you're already going to have, uh, make sure that you're cleaning your front elements and get clean all your gear beforehand. Otherwise, those little specks of dust and stuff on your front elements are just going to make everything worse. So take the time to clean up your stuff as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Mostly uh, plan for serious traffic jams, leave early in the morning and plan on, you know, having like a cooler with some food and water and don't plan on yeah. getting home at the normal time because it's going to take forever to travel out of the area if you're going into that path of totality that we talked about. Okay. Nick, that was exactly what we were looking for. Incredible tips, incredible insight. You're setting people up for success. I know people can find out more from you about your podcast and your YouTube channel. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so anybody that's interested in landscape photography, which might be a couple of you, I just yeah. launched a new podcast called The Landscape Photography Podcast. No idea where I got the name. And <laughs> if uh, people are interested in that, they can find it on iTunes. And actually, I've got a couple episodes on YouTube. And yeah, you can just awesome. find me here on YouTube. You can find me on iTunes. You can find me at nickpagephotography.com or Instagram or whatever. Just do a search for Nick Page and you'll find me somewhere. Awesome. Nick, we appreciate it. Thanks again. No problem. Thanks for having me on.